We are here because 10 years ago, our relation with technology changed. We decided to stop using technology as a tool and to use it as a part of our body because we found it really interesting to use it as extension of our senses and perceptions. Neil used it as an as a extension of his color perception, and I use it as an extension of my movement perception. So the reason why I wanted to extend my color perception is because I was born completely colorblind, so I've never seen color. I don't know what color looks like, but since I was a child, I always wanted to extend my senses and perceive what color is, because color is an extremely social element. It's in many elements that have nothing to do with color, like Bluetooth, Yellow Pages, Pink Panther, James Brown, he has a color as a surname. There's even a whole country called Greenland, which has nothing to do with green, but contains the color green. It's also very annoying when color is used as a code. Uh, for example, on maps, this is fine, but if I go to Tokyo and the map is just based on color, it can be quite complicated. Also, there's this strange situation when you only see gray scale. Three different countries share exactly the same flag. So the reason why I wanted to perceive color was not to perceive the beauty of color, but to perceive this social element. There's also when people describe things like, have you seen this man with ginger hair, blue eyes, and dressed in pink? I would have no idea if I've seen this man, because the only information I get is that the man has hair, that he has eyes, and that he's not naked. So that's why I decided to extend my senses. And 10 years ago tomorrow, uh, I started a project with Adam Montandon, which was uh, the aim was to just simply to create something so that I could perceive color. And we created this electronic eye that now is attached to the back of my head and allows me to hear the color frequencies in front of me. So instead of seeing color, I can hear the colors in front of me. In 2007, I was able to perceive all 360 different microtones in 360 notes. So each color or each hue has a specific note. I don't know if you can hear this, but now you, you should be able to hear the different uh, sounds. Uh, it's, uh, it's going up from orange to yellow and from yellow to green. So I started hearing color, and then I, my brain just got used to hearing color, and it became just as an extra sense. Now, uh, I created different headsets so that it would be more comfortable to hear color. First thing I did was to cut the headphones in half, because at the beginning I was using a webcam and a five kilo computer and a pair of headphones. In 2004, I decided just to cut it in half so I could hear people as well and hear color. The other change was to reduce the computer and to uh, use a chip. So now I have a chip installed at the back of my head. And the other big change was to start using bone conduction. So instead of using my ears to hear color, I use my bone. So this differentiates visual sounds from audio sounds. Visual sounds come through bone conduction, and audio sounds come through air conduction. Now, the next step is to stop using electricity, because every three or four days I have to plug myself in order to charge the cybernetic part. Uh, my aim is just to use my body uh, energy to charge the chip, so I want to use my blood circulation with a turbine so that I can charge the chip. Also, the, the possibility of the electronic eye is that I can connect it to a mobile phone so that this would allow me to perceive the colors that other people are seeing. So if someone in China wants to send me uh, the colors that he or she is perceiving in China, that she can just send me the images through a mobile phone and I'll be perceiving the colors in front of, of them. So I could be in an office and I could be perceiving a sunset that someone is sending me in uh, Australia. So I, there was a point when I was able to perceive all visual colors, and I didn't see why I should stop, So because there's many more colors that we can see that exist. So I decided to continue extending my color perception, and I added infrared and ultraviolet. So now I can actually perceive more colors than a human eye. I can perceive if there's infrared in a, in a room or in a shop or in a bank. And if, if there's a infrared in a bank, it means that the alarm is on. If I can't hear the infrared, it probably means that the alarm is off. And also, perceiving ultraviolet allows me to know if it's a good day or a bad day to sunbathe. Because if you hear ultraviolet, then you know it, it can be dangerous for the skin. So since Neil started perceiving color better than I, my desire to experiment with senses started to grow. So I started to experiment also with color. And I wanted to, to know what it feels to perceive just color without any shape. So I created these kaleidoscope glasses where the shape is broken and you can just perceive, perceive color without any shape at all. So I wear this for some time. But then uh, I realized that color 
what was was not like that relevant to me. I wanted something more personal, more involved in my world. And as I'm a choreographer, so I want to investigate and to get a deeper feeling of movement. That's why I wanted to to get more involved with movement. And I this and I decided that uh, to get like really focused on the speed and to know uh, and what speed people walk around me. So. Uh, we created this device, it's called Speedwork, and with this I could, I could know in, in the, the speed of people walking um, in front of me. But this was uh, quite, I, I wanted to something more integrated to my body, so we created these earrings that it goes with an infrared light connected to a, a vibrator. So every time someone was walking in front of me, it created a little vibration, and it depends on the interval of each vibration, I could know the speed walking in front of me. Um, yeah, this is the, the, RAM, the internal. And then experimenting with this, I, did, I realized that if I turn around the earrings, I could know if someone was getting close to me. So this opened up like my perception to 300, 360 degrees around me. So because we, I realized that all of our senses are in front of our body and we have the back of our body asleep. So this gave us like open up the, the space. Um, then also this, all this experiment, experimenting, all these creations was always, uh, uh, I, I always had the need to have some people around me. So I always had this need of people walking of movement of the other people. So I had the desire to, to have something more, more deeper, more that I could be alone in the planet and to feel movement. And then I realized that the, the Earth itself, it moves very often, and we cannot feel it. So that's why we created the se seismic sense. And the se seismic sense is uh, where uh, um, um, a sensor attached to my arm that is connected to online seismographs. So every time there is a little earthquake, as small as one in Richterstale, it makes a little vibration in my arm. Depending, depending on the vibration, I can know if it's a small earthquake like one or like a bigger one. So now I can, I can this gives me like a, a, a deeper connection with, with the Earth. Uh, we have this project with Neil this is uh, uh, like a performance where the audience and, and I wait for a, an, earthquake, an earthquake to take place. And every time there's an earthquake, I dance with intensity of the earthquake towards the direction where the earthquake is happening. So if I feel an earthquake here in Vienna, but that it's happening in California, I would move around and I dance to the, um, with intensity of this. And then Neil transforms the frequency of the earthquake to sound and light, so we, we create the light and music and the dance in real time. And then this is this uh, other project that we, we, traveled, we traveled around Europe to, <clears throat> to each capital of Europe to define it in a different way. And I was, uh, this was with a, a speed, uh, with an earring detector. So um, I realized that people, when when I'm in a, in a specific place, they tend to walk faster or, s or slower. There's like this common sense to walk in a different speed depending on where you are and the people around you. So I wanted to define each capital of Europe depending on uh, the different speed of the people walking. And Neil travel, traveled in each, uh, in each capital, well, we traveled together, and he defined it each city with a dominant color. So we wanted to create a, di a dictionary for example, Paris with its own colors and its own speed. Like the fastest capital would be London and Estocolm, and the slowest is the Vatican City. Well, my life has changed in many ways. One of the, is the way I dress, because before I used to dress in a way that it looked good, but now I dress in a way that it sounds good, because each color is a note. So today, for example, I'm dressing with C and uh, F, but I could, I could have worn, for example, this combination, which would be dressed in C major, or this would be a minor chord, so I would dress like this in a funeral, for example. 
and this is, would be dressed as a song. So you can actually design clothes that actually sounds like a specific song. So this tie, for example, sounds like Sega Bodega, a, p a piece of music that I like, so I just transpose it into a tie, so that whenever I want to listen to music, I can just listen to my tie. <laughs> Also, the way I perceive food has changed because now I can actually compose music with food. So on a plate, you can actually create a, a specific song and then you can eat your favorite song. So we're creating this menu where you can go to a restaurant and ask for Vivaldi as first plate or Mozart as the main. I guess here in Vienna, you would love to eat some Mozart dishes. And you can have some Lady Gaga dessert, for example. So the main aim of the menu is that you'll eat your songs. So my experience of supermarkets has changed completely because now when I walk around the supermarket, I hear electronic music because each color is a specific note and I really enjoy just walking around because it's like going to a nightclub. Also, the way I perceive art has changed because now I can listen to a Picasso or an Andy Warhol. So visual art has become music. And this is just an example of how you can hear the, the different uh, notes. Milk, for example, is silent, so you don't hear milk. Milk has no hue, so it doesn't really sound. Uh, this is another project we did. So yeah. the, the, the products that you find in the supermarket work on this film, and then the music of the film is created from the products and the colors that keep appearing on the film. So it's a sonochromatic film. So instead of creating background music for a film, you can actually use the music that already is in the colors in the film. Here you can hear a banana. So this is the first color that appears on this film. And it keeps gradually growing as long as there's more and more products on the film. This is just uh, how you can hear some of the artworks. So I can actually hear the scream. I can uh, differentiate easily a, a painter from another by just hearing the sound of the paintings. And also my sense of beauty has changed, because now beauty doesn't only depend on the shape of someone's face, it also depends on the combination of colors. So someone might look very beautiful, but might sound terrible, and it might happen the other way around. So beauty also depends on the combinations of, of colors. And uh, that's why I create also sound portraits, where instead of uh, drawing someone's face, I just write down the different notes of someone's face, and then I send them an MP3 of their face. This is a human color wheel. I, I realize that humans are not black and white. We all share the same hue, which is orange. Black people are not black. They're very, very dark orange. And white people are not white. They're very, very light orange. So we all actually share this same hue. Also, uh, I can actually also transpose what I hear to color, because when I listen to music, each note relates to a, to a color. So I started to paint music. This is, for example, Mozart's Queen of the Night. And this is Baby Baby by Justin Bieber. I can also transpose uh, speeches, because when people talk, each frequency is a color, so you can transpose speeches into color. And I can give uh, color concerts. This is a sock concert where I play different color socks, but you can also create face concerts where the audience cues, and then you just connect the eye to loudspeakers, and then you play the colors of people's faces. And if the concert sounds terrible, it's always the audience's fault, because the colors come from them. Uh in 2010, Neil and I created the Cyborg Foundation with three aims. One is to help people to become a cyborg, the second is to defend the cyborg rights, and the third one is to promote cyborgism as a social and art movement. We believe that cyborgism is a, an art movement and social movement, an art movement especially because it allows artists to create art through new senses. The, the good thing about uniting cybernetics to the body is that you can create a new sense and then you can express yourself through a new sense, and we believe that slowly also society will stop using technology as an external tool and will start using it as a part of the body. So we believe that cyborg is this union between cybernetics and the organism. In my case, the union is between the software and the brain. There was a point when I started to hear colors in my dream, so it was the brain creating the same sounds as the software when I was asleep, so I was sleeping on, or dreaming in color, and it was created by the brain. And this is what I tried to explain to the British government in 2004 when I wasn't allowed to renew my passport photo because they said that I was appearing with techno some kind of electric equipment, and I told them that what they were seeing was not an electronic equipment, that this was now a part of my body, an extension of my senses, and it should be included. So they finally, after some correspondences, they allowed me to appear with this, the first electronic eye, so now this allows me to travel freely around the world without having problem in, 
in airports. This is when I was wearing the earrings, and the Spanish government when actually really allowed me really easily to, to renew my, my passport, I guess. It was a bit hidden, so they didn't see it much. And in the Cyborg Foundation, we work in different projects. This is the finger book. We had like, this, this uh, friend that had a finger missing, and he dedicated his life to create uh, media projects. So he installed a camera on his finger so he could uh, take pictures with it. Now, the, the next step is to, be, to do this project more cybernetic and to have more communication with the camera and his body, not, not just pressing pictures, not more feeling. Then this internal compass, this other project, is that is uh, a device attached in the, in the ankle and vibrates every time the person is facing north. So it helps you to orientate in the space. Also, another project that has nothing to do with, uh, um, with uh, cybernetics, but uh, that I'm really interested in having is just having, uh, I have some teeth missing, and I just want to replace them with artificial teeth, but with light inside, so that just in case of emergency, I can just click, and then I can use my mouth to see. In case there's a total darkness, or if I need some emergency light, then instead of having normal uh, uh, teeth that replace existing ones, then I just want to have some better ones that could have some light. Now, um, we believe that all these sensors that we've talked about are sensors that can actually allow us to perceive reality in an extended way, but related to other animal species. Because things like, my case, hearing through bone conduction is something that dolphins can already do. Perceiving infrared or ultraviolet is something that many insects can do. Also, having an antenna is something that many other uh, species in the world have. So we believe that becoming a cyborg is actually something that can help us become more animal-alike and actually extend our senses to the level of other animals. Yeah, when I tell people like I perceive earthquakes, it's seen like a bad thing or a catastrophe. But the catastrophe is not the earthquake itself, is that humans haven't been able to adapt to the earth and the, uh, and the needs of the earth. So I think cybernetics could help us to, to perceive the world in, in a better way and to know better the world where we live in. So the other senses as well, like having internal light is something that also some fish can have when, when they are in total darkness under the ocean. They, there are some fish that can cr produce light, so it's something that already exists. The fact of knowing where the north is is something that sharks have as well. They can just detect where the north is by their uh, electromagnetic uh, field sense. So we believe that we can learn a lot from the senses that already exist in our planet and that we can apply them to humans by applying cybernetics to the body. So, we just would like to encourage you to experiment the use of cybernetics as an extension of your senses and try to uh, just become a cyborg for a while or forever and just e explore the extension of a particular sense. So we just simply encourage you to become a cyborg. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.